Hello, thank you, and welcome to the Hoosier Environmental Council's 2021 Award Ceremony. I'm Marianne Holland, Senior Development Manager for the Hoosier Environmental Council. Before we begin our award ceremony, we want to pay tribute to three great environmentalists who we lost this year, Dave Menzer, Jeanette Nagyu, and Larry Lindley. Dave Menzer of Indianapolis was an extraordinary campaigner for clean energy for Citizens Action Coalition, who did his work with knowledge, humor, warmth, and kindness. Jeanette Nagyu, who was from Michigan City, left an enormous legacy of protecting nature, including helping to tackle algae blooms, bacterial pollution, and industrial contamination, and striving to preserve and protect the Lake Michigan watershed. Larry Lindley, who lived in Cumberland, was an invaluable voice for creation care, advancing the cause through the interfaith community, his church, our great partner at Earth Charter Indiana, and through being a longtime active member of HEC. Our first award today is the Frontline Advocate of the Year. This person was born and raised in North Carolina, obtained their undergraduate degree from Martin University, and went on to complete a master's degree in business administration from Indiana Wesleyan University. This person now resides in the Martindale Brightwood community of Indianapolis, where they live with their husband, Walter, who is very supportive of their volunteer work. For about five years since becoming an empty nester, this person has been advocating in many capacities, including Martindale Brightwood One Voice and Martindale Brightwood Code Compliance and Land Use Standing Committee, and will soon begin a term on the One Voice Board's Executive Committee. As an accomplished executive with nearly two decades of experience in organizational management, corporate finance, and community advocacy, this person is committed to the growth of the organizations and communities they serve, and this person shows up 100% of the time, advocating for the betterment of their community. HEC is pleased to honor Mrs. Jacqueline McMillan Gunn as our 2021 Frontline Advocate of the Year. Our next award is our Distinguished Service Award. This person has called Indiana home since 1956. Raised near Lafayette and Terre Haute, this person feels blessed to have been able to experience and share information about environmental issues in every part of the state. Water quality has been this person's primary fo focus as a Peace Corps volunteer a state regulatory biologist, and consulting environmental scientist over a 46-year career helping make wise decisions about water use in Indiana. On multiple occasions, this person has generously donated their time to provide technical assistance to the Hoosier Environmental Council for work on water quality, sustainable agriculture, and coal ash. The winner of the 2021 Distinguished Service Award is Greg Bright. Our next awardee holds a bachelor's degree in computer science, a master's degree in industrial engineering, and a master of business administration. After using these skills in the business world for many years, this person turned their expertise to one of Indiana's largest industrial wastes, the ash left after burning coal. This person has spent countless hours since 2018 working with the Hoosier Environmental Council staff to dig through mountains of documentation on the disposal of coal ash, research costs associated with coal ash disposal, and to write up a detailed technical critique of one of Indiana's coal ash sites for submission to the EPA. This person's efforts have been a generous gift to HEC and to all who live in the state of Indiana. The winner of the 2021 Volunteer of the Year Award is Robin Miner. The next awardee has been working to fight childhood lead poisoning for decades. 
much of this person's work in Indiana has focused on engaging communities, particularly those most at risk, in identifying and eradicating local sources of lead exposure. This person's work has involved citizen science and community resilience building and has been achieved in partnership with close colleagues at many organizations throughout the state, including the Hoosier Environmental Council, Groundwork Indy, NAACP, Capra Institute, Keep Indianapolis Beautiful, and many others. This person says that the work is not done, so there is continued engagement with state and local officials to provide the most accurate and actionable information for communities in the fight against lead. This awardee earned a bachelor's degree in geology and a PhD in earth science and has used that scientific background to protect future generations. The 2021 Improving Kids Environment Award goes to Dr. Gabe Filippelli. Our next award is the Sustainable Champion of the Year Award. This person is a force of nature for our environment. They lead the organizing of a highly regarded annual conference that brings an increasingly diverse group of stakeholders together. This person also collaborates on forums that raise the visibility of such important water-related issues as PFAS and wetlands. This person is a true thought leader, as reflected by developing the first citizen science-based water quality sampling program used for agency decision-making, helping to formulate the state's first ever watershed report card and providing expert testimony and analysis related to the Anti-Wetlands Bill, Senate Enrolled Act 389. That thought leadership on SEA 389 led this person to be named to the Governor's Wetlands Task Force. On top of being a convener and thought leader, this person is gifted at working in a broad stakeholder environment, from assisting a multi-agency, multi-utility consulting team to conducting Central Indiana's first ever water supply and demand study, to leading stakeholder outreach for the newly evolving five county Wabash River Greenway plan. For all these reasons and more, we're proud to name Jill Hoffman as the 2021 Sustainable Champion of the Year. Our next award is the Mal Atherton Climate Advocate of the Year Award, and we have two co-winners this year. The first co-winner is a grassroots organization of young people fighting for climate justice in Indiana. Launched in December, excuse me, September of 2020 in the Wabash River Valley, this group currently engages over 150 students from communities across Indiana, including Indianapolis, Evansville, Terre Haute, Fort Wayne, Gary, Hammond, Carmel, Alexandria, and Kokomo. These young Hoosiers are, in the words of this group, done with the Indiana General Assembly's years of ignorance and inaction toward the climate crisis. This dynamic grassroots group is currently working with Republican State Senator Ron Alting on bipartisan legislation to initiate strong climate action in Indiana. By bringing youth to the forefront of state politics, they are ready to create the change needed to protect Indiana's future. The first recipient of the 2021 Mal Atherton Award, uh, Climate Advocate Award, is Confront the Climate Crisis. More on our second co-winner in a few moments. Now we'll do our uh, 2021 Civil Servant of the Year Award. This person is described, professionally speaking, as someone who was an excellent listener, rational thinker, with a solutions-oriented mindset, who did not compromise decisions. He was gifted at regularly meeting with stakeholders at the onset of a brownfield redevelopment project to address environmental risk and concerns before businesses applied to the Indiana Brownfields program for assistance. 
This person's calm presence in meetings with stakeholders provided the reassurance they needed to know that they could proceed with the development with program involvement and would receive top-notch environmental guidance that would not compromise development timelines. This person's years of experience enabled them to weigh the sometimes competing interests in a development deal in a way that would both facilitate a real estate transaction and ensure the safe reuse of a historically contaminated property. This person's former employer estimated that they managed an astonishing 250 brownfield sites while working with the state of Indiana. Projects of note included the Circle City Industrial Park, located right in this person's Indianapolis backyard, the city of Jeffersonville's new gateway, and Newport Landing in LaPorte. In addition to being a stellar civil servant, this person was an incredible spouse, parent, and friend who inspired countless people to embrace a sustainable lifestyle and who spent their spare time helping to build the local food movement in Indianapolis. We're truly honored to give the inaugural Civil Servant of the Year Award to the late Kyle Hendricks, who we lost this year at just 58 years old. In tribute to him and in loving memory, this honor will now be known as the Kyle Hendricks Award. Our next award is the 2021 Sustainable Agriculture Advocate Award. This person is a lifelong resident of rural Decatur County and a former 4-H member. They hold a Master's of Management from Indiana Wesleyan University, as well as a Bachelor of Arts in Communication and History from Hanover College. This person and their spouse, a former FFA member, have committed nearly a decade to raising awareness and educating others about factory farms and their devastating impact on rural communities, health, and environment. In addition to attending hundreds of local planning and zoning meetings and sharing the information they have gathered about factory farms with board and audience members, this person most recently worked with concerned residents in Bartholomew County, as well as the Hoosier Environmental Council to bring the independent documentary Right to Harm to Columbus. This person is currently working with the Sierra Club Hoosier Chapter, Winding Waters Group, and Indiana Humanities to bring a watershed workshop to Decatur County. The winner of the 2021 Sustainable Agriculture Advocate Award goes to Jennifer McNeely. And now for our second co-winner of the Mount Atherton Climate Advocate of the Year Award. This group has made it their mission to decarbonize Indiana's power sector. For nine years, this organization has set ambitious goals and exceeded them. Due to these efforts, 22 coal-fired power plants have been retired in Indiana, representing 62% of the state's total coal capacity. Nine coal plants remain and as they continue to work for the retirement of those plants, this organizational organization is also pivoting to stop utilities from rushing to replace coal with fracked glass. Gra gas, pardon me. <laughs> this co-winner would like to acknowledge that they could not have made this progress without powerful allies, including the Hoosier Environmental Council and others. The expertise of the Hoosier chapter of the Sierra Club or the resources of a national organization that allow them to deeply organize in Indiana communities and bring to bear legal, communications, and digital strategies, strategies from team members who are committed to progress in Indiana, no matter where they happen to live. As this winner states, Indiana is a tough but extremely gratifying place to fight the climate crisis. And it's an honor to do so alongside fellow Indiana advocates and local volunteer leaders in the communities where we work. The second co-winner of the 2021 Mal Atherton Climate Advocate of the Year Award is Indiana Beyond Coal. Our next awardee 
has been tirelessly speaking out to their state and local officials on the need to reform our laws and regulations to protect their communities in Carroll County and Hoosiers statewide from the devastating effects of factory farms. Here is a passage this person wrote that exemplifies their passionate and compelling advocacy. Approximately 360 million gallons of hog waste are applied annually in Carroll County. If one were to listen to the so-called experts that have been spoken have spoken in favor of more CAFOs before my county commissioners, one would think my county has sufficient land to accept even more hog waste. But not a single one of these experts live in Carroll County, and at every level of government, the elected and appointed have failed me and other Hoosiers by allowing national and international corporate conglomerates to pollute and bring contagious disease to farming communities across the state. IDEM regulations allow animal waste to be spread in floodplains with no notice given to homeowners that the field next door could be the receiver of millions of gallons of pharmaceutical disease infested animal waste waste that is not tested for anything past nitrogen and phosphorus content. State health regulations make it perfectly legal for CAFOs to supposedly compost thousands upon thousands of dead animals in piles on the ground that, to, that attract scavengers as they rot and cause gruesome fly infestations in surrounding homes. I have lived all my life on a Hoosier farm and never would I have imagined that my government would allow these horrific conditions, disease, and pollution to come into American farming communities for the profit of out-of-state corporations. As the primary election season rolls around, Hoosiers should be questioning any incumbent on their position on factory farms and vote, work to vote them out if they do not commit to taking action. Well said. The Frontline Advocate of the Year Award goes to Lisa our next award is Environmental Lawyer of the Year. This awardee is the premier nonprofit environmental law organization in the U.S. The organization wields the power of law and the strength of partnership to protect people's health, to preserve magnificent places and wildlife, to advance clean energy and to combat climate change. Their motto is, we are here because the earth needs a good lawyer. This organization represents HEC in several critically important legal cases and states they have been honored to work with the Hoosier Environmental Council for over 15 years to protect Indiana communities, our water resources, and our unique and beautiful environment from the pollution from fossil fuels, particularly coal ash. The 2021 Award for Environmental Lawyer of the Year goes to Earth Justice and its experienced and highly capable attorneys. Our next award is Statesman of the Year. This person was first elected as a state representative in 1996, and due to experience as the Henry County Assessor and Franklin Township Trustee, was slated by Republican House leadership to serve on the Local Government Committee. Among his many awards over the years, the Indiana Conservation Alliance recognized this person as Legislator of the Year in 2014 for leadership in creating the Sustainable Natural Resource Task Force and their commitment to improving quality of life for the families and communities in their district. Part of their work is their tireless, tireless effort to pass common sense legislation to protect our environment and rural communities from the devastating effects of factory farms. This person's district has 60 of them. In the process, they have courageously stood up to the powerful livestock industry and their own party. The winner of the 2021 Statesman of the Year Award goes to Representative Tom Saunders. Our next award is Environmental Justice Advocate of the Year. Like other Indiana cities, the Northwest Indiana community where our next awardee is located 
had robust public transit at the turn of the 20th century in the form of streetcars. And like other cities, public transit declined for several decades. But public transit was reborn and started growing again with the establishment of this organization, which starting in 1975 made regional transit a priority with the launch of the region's first modern intercity bus routes in 1996. Since then, this organization has improved service while expanding to serve 10 communities. While a regional system, modern improvement efforts are focused on central neighborhoods. New services, tools, and facilities are designed to bring in new riders while not creating barriers for communities of color and existing riders. These efforts include a rapid bus service, solar lighting, and planned landscaping to reduce the heat island effect. Tactical urbanism projects are focused on making downtown more livable. This organization has worked with food scarcity organizations to study grocery shopping accessibility and schedule transit adjacent farmer, farmers markets, discounted bus passes, and is even creating a bike share program with downtown developers. And their first electric buses due to be delivered in May, will reduce pollution in our densest neighborhoods. HEC is proud to award Environmental Justice Advocate of the Year to Gary Public Transit. Our next awardee is an organization that serves Hoosiers by promoting people using trails, walkways, bikeways, greenways, blueways, and brownways, with a vision for Indiana achieving the status of a trail state via trail people, trail facilities, and trail activities. The organization's projects include building the Milwaukee Road Transportation Trailway out of Bedford and raising concerns about the proposed Mid-States Corridor Highway, helping to coordinate advocacy for environmental factors and forestry while promoting people, perspectives, and pathways to modify INDOT's car-centric conceptions. Other projects include serving as the lead agent for United States Bicycle Route Number 37, which passes through Indiana, coordinating the Southern Indiana portion of the American Discovery Trail, and teaching bicycle safety to students and civic groups. This organization consists of two related groups, the Hoosier Rails to Trails Council and the Indiana Trails Fund. Our 2021 Organization of the Year is Indiana Trails. Our final award today is our Lifetime Achievement Award. This awardee was born and raised on a for farm in Northwest Iowa, which fueled their activism for local, diverse, regenerative use of the land and the people and creatures who live there. Their career has been primarily as an educator of students from middle school through graduate school in the fields of English and European literature, speech, humanities, German language, and culture. At Crawfordsville High School, for instance, Patch of Ground projects have long remained a centerpiece of this person's American literature classes. This honoree has been a community voice for natural living and local food through columns in the Crawfordsville Journal Review. This person's column on local food and local living is entitled Real Food. This awardee is also a member of Sustainable Initiatives and the Community Local Food Summit team in Montgomery County. This honoree is a networker for the League of Women Voters of Montgomery County Climate Team that sponsored a statewide youth summit last spring. Alongside husband Mark, they recently established a Solar Power to the People Fund at the Montgomery County Community Foundation. This individual and their students created PBL Amtrak, a project for which students cleaned up and maintained the tiny but busy local train station, planted a perennial garden, and did award-winning advocacy work for public transportation. A little over a decade ago, the PBL Amtrak students were awarded Amtrak's prestig prestigious Champion of the Rails Award 
the only award Amtrak gives to non-Amtrak employees. This awardee holds a BA from the University of Denver, an MA from Western State University in Colorado, and a PhD in Comparative Literature from the University of Washington, Seattle. Our awardee and their husband, Mark, had two children. Son Ian, no longer living, was the founder of the Crawfordsville Downtown Recycling Program, and daughter Alex, a teacher and theater person, has moved to a homestead in Michigan. The recipient of our 2021 Lifetime Achievement Award is Helen Mundy Hudson. That concludes our award program. We're now starting another networking time. So check out our outreach brainstorming session on the session tab on the left-hand side of your screen. Just below that icon, there's networking where you can make a new friend for at least three minutes of conversation. It's always great to get to know environmentalist friend. So please check that out. Um, below networking, visit our, our Expo booth. HEC has a booth where we'd love you to stop by and post your well wishes for our executive director, Jesse Carbonda. And there are many uh, amazing nonprofits and green-minded businesses in the Expo area too uh, that you can get to know. Um, finally, if you look at the top right of your screen, you will see an envelope. There may be direct messages for you in there. And this is also a place where you can actually even video chat with people you know privately. Um, we'll resume presentations and panels again at 2.30. So please be sure to join us back on stage at that time. Thank you.